the harbinger of Minoth, protectorate warcaster. I am the harbinger of Minoth, his vessel on Cain. Through me the creator speaks, and he has much to say. The harbinger of Minoth to the Synod, 603 AR. In late 603 AR, three secretators and a score of knights exemplar arrived in a small village just north of ancient Ichthyr to escort a teenage girl to Ymir. Calling herself the Harbinger of Minoth, she said the Creator had come to her in a vision and declared her too holy to touch the earth, and she had floated above it ever since. As the Harbinger traveled to Ymir, Word spread and whole communities emptied as the faithful followed her. At sunset, the Visigoths assembled in the sovereign temple of the one true faith and faced the young woman floating in the blood red sunlight. Without leave, she described her visions and the voice that filled her. She claimed to wear a blindfold because to see the world through Menoff's eyes was overwhelming. She singled out individual Visigoths, Visigoths by name, speaking of things they had hidden from each other. Finally, she turned to Hierarch Garrick Boyle and smiled, just as the great sand clocks struck the tenth hour of her trials. The Hierarch pointed to the floor where her shadow stood, unchanged after all that time. Boyle stepped down and bent his knee to ask if she would serve as his personal spiritual advisor. The years that followed reinforce the fact that the Harbinger is a direct conduit of the God as countless miracles have transpired in her presence. Though unburdened with worldly trifles, she reservedly endorsed Hierarch Vol when he called for a pilgrimage to witness her divinity, an event meant to heal the rift between the Protectorate and those of the Old Faith. The appearance of the Harbinger of Minoth is heralded as the single greatest religious event in Western Imran since the discovery of the canon of the true law. The Harbinger proved her, her commitment to the faithful when she went forth to confront a darkness in the Thornwood, prophesied to threaten all Menites, both living and dead. There she released the souls of thousands of Menites, captured and enslaved by the Orgoth, and gave her life to save them before they could be used as fuel for an even greater evil instigated by the Lich Lords of Crix. All of the Protectorate mourned when her body was returned to Emir, and hundreds of thousands witnessed the miracle of her resurrection by Menoth's will. But God's message was clear. The Harbinger had yet not yet fulfilled her divine destiny in Cain. When Vol prepared to lead a crusade into Caspia itself, the Harbinger reminded him of Sulon's final prophecy. Doom would befall any hierarch who entered Caspia before the divine city was made whole. Voyle ignored her warning, and she silently accompanied him in what would be believed in to be his moment of triumph. Hours later, Voyle stood on the edge of total victory in Caspia when Hubris overwhelmed his devotion to the lawgiver, leading to his death. Recovering from her own wounds received in the conflict, the Harbinger saw Hierarch Voyle buried with full state honors and decreed Severius his replacement, ensuring a smooth transition. She journeyed north to join the new Hierarch and renewed their efforts to reach the fateful and enemy lands she has proven her willingness to wade personally into battle, where she is immensely powerful and possesses the ability not only to command warjacks, but to decimate whole companies of men with divine magic and her unerring sword, Providence. Completely infused with the glory of Menoth, she is a beacon to the devoted that have reinvigorated all Menites who have beheld her in their own eyes. With the Harbinger leading the way, the Crusade continues to storm across Western Emirin, uniting the faithful while re releasing the wrath of the Lawgiver for all those who dare defy Menoth.